Okay, so um, for those of you that missed um, October 23rd's class, or for those of you that um, just need a reminder of what we talked about, um, we are gonna talk about, this calls it comic balloons, but we're gonna call them speech bubbles. Um, and uh, also included in this discussion is the actual text that you include in these speech bubbles. So this has been adapted from a comic book tutorial by a, a person named Chris Oakley. And so uh, to begin this, we're just gonna talk about like, your drawing might be the best drawing in the entire world, but if you don't think about where you're placing those speech bubbles, and if your lettering is really bad, it, it can just ruin the whole effect. So you need to think about your lettering and consider it to be just as important as the artwork. The reader needs to be able to make out what the lettering is. A lot of times people will crowd the lettering or they'll write really tiny or um, they, you know, have misspelled words and stuff. And so you really, that's not going to help your case. You really need to think about all of these things. And then what if you're like, this is a, an example of what if you don't leave enough room for your, your words and your speech bubbles um, after you've made the drawing, like this particular drawing here, the speech bubbles are totally blocking the, the, this person who is punching this other person. Like you, we don't even see the punch because the speech bubbles cover it up. So you, you have to like, what happens if you don't need, leave in the frame for them? Or do you, do you like just get rid of some of your script or do you leave the script like it is and just say, I don't really care and cover up important parts of your drawings? Or do you redraw the whole thing just so that you can, you know, um, put a little more thought into it? And so you do redraw it and you think it out before you commit it to ink. In other words, you start drawing it in pencil. So when we read, we we read from left to right in, in the United States. Not every country does, um, but that's how we read is from left to right. And so when you're setting up your panels, you don't want to confuse the viewer. They shouldn't have to guess which way to go. And something else that we also do, like if you have a, a series of panels on your page, you have to think about um, the direction you read in, but also where you want the reader to read next. So one of the things that helps do that is the placement of the speech bubble. So this is up higher, this is down lower, this leads you to here, this leads you to here, this leads you to here, this leads you to here. And part of what's leading you in the direction you want to go in this zigzag direction is the placement of the tail on the speech bubble. And I'm gonna show you in more detail this in just a minute. So speech bubbles have tails. Just a little circle and then it's the tail. And the tail should lead to the mouth of whoever's speaking and it should act as an arrow that tells you what direction you're supposed to read. So I know it's kind of hard to see this because it's um, obliterated by the, the red arrow that's drawn on it. But the speech bubble where it's saying, Nathan, Nathan, God, I wish that thing would quit showing up. It's leading, it leads down to the speech bubble. So this guy's stuck in here and the tail of his speech bubble, see how it points down? Well, it's leading to this speech bubble. This speech bubble tail 
is pushed, like they're going in this direction. And then the tail of this speech bubble points us in this direction. And then you go from here to here and we're being let out of the page because we're supposed to read the next page. Now there's something else that I'm gonna tell you in a minute, but the, also the placement of the speech bubble has to do with who is speaking first. The higher up the speech bubble is, that indicates that that person has spoken first. And then if the speech bubble is lower, it means that person has spoken um, secondly. So we're gonna we're gonna look at these two pages. I'm gonna move my big head out of the way. We're gonna look at these at the placement of these bubbles on these pages. And but right now, in terms of the direction the arrow of the speech bubbles going and it is it leading us the right direction so when we look at this particular page of panels the speech bubble arrows the tails in most cases are not leading us where we're supposed to go so this one the tail it leads down, so it's telling us to go down here. And this one leads over to here. There's nothing over there to look at. This, this one leads down over here again. This one leads down here. This is the only one out of all these speech bubbles on this page that really leads us in the right direction, but then it still doesn't because it kind of got this little hook on it and it leads us down here. So we don't want, that's not, you know, like even though people have common sense and they know where to read, kind of helps if you have this little guide that tells you where to go. So if we go back, this is the finished drawing of the, the drawing we saw at the beginning with all the directional arrows showing us how you're supposed to zigzag over the page. So this one, where he says Nathan, it points over to here. This tail right here points down to here. This tail and this tail right here, these are leading us, they're telling us to go from left to right. This tail right here is leading us down to here, and this tail right here leads us over, and this one leads us out of the page. So, in terms of who's speaking first, this guy right here, the speech bubble is higher. The speech bubble is lower. So that indicates that the person that's saying ha ha is speaking before this person says Pythias. So so again, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna show you how where you place that tail makes a difference. So this this is the correct version and the tail even though this the bubbles in the same place the tail is curving and leading us over this one the tail is curved up it's just kind of like not leading us over it's leading us out these tails are all curved up they're leading us out where they should be curved down oops my bad they should be curved down so that we go down and out of the page. Um, so when you're laying out your image, when you're first sketching it in pencil, this is when you figure out where the bubbles go. But I'm going to differ from the way this is set up um, because you don't like this makes you think you draw your bubbles first and then put your words. You don't, because how do you know how big your bubble's supposed to be until you put the words? So you should put the words first and then put the speech bubble second so that you know how much room you need. Um, and you also, when we talked about balance, when we talked about symmetrical and radial and asymmetrical balance 
you kind of want the speech bubbles to not detract from that, not throw the balance off, but lend themselves to it. So this particular piece, I'm going to just suggest that it's radial balance, and like this would be the center point where the hair is coming off of that center point, where her nose is coming off of it. So the, the speech bubbles also are kind of radiating out from that. So we get this circular motion here um, that's leading our eye all around the image. So let's go back to the, to the um, speech bubbles again. So there's something else you need to think about. When you, like, when you draw a speech bubble around words, you don't want too much wasted space. You don't want too, like, too much space around them, but you also don't want to crowd the words in the, in the edge of the speech bubble right next to each other. So one way to think about this and do this is um let me see if i can articulate this well is to make the words fit symmetrically so they're see how this is like this is a smaller group of words this is a longer group of words this is a smaller group of words doesn't really help but if you if you draw a line down the middle most likely there's a equal number of letters to the left of the line and to the right of the line. So it's centered is what I'm trying to say. It's centered. Do you want to center your words? You don't want to do it where um, the lines are too long um, unless they're saying a whole lot of stuff. You don't want to do it where you're stacking the words like this, where it's like one word, one word, one word, one word. You kind of want to do it so that it fits within a diamond. So the top and bottom word use less letters. What's in the center uses more. Does that make any sense? So you want it to kind of like fit into this diamond shape. So when you're writing the words down before you draw the speech bubble, you you break them up so that what's in the middle is wider than what's on the top and bottom. And, you know, it could be um, three lines of words or it can be five lines of words, but you're trying to break it up so it fits into a diamond. Then you draw a diamond around those words. That diamond's going to end up being erased. And then you fit the speech bubble around that, the points of that, oops, the points of that diamond. That just sounds like, that probably sounds like Charlie Brown's teacher, wah, wah, wah. Um, if you draw a square around your words, rectangle or square, you end up with a lot of wasted space. To see all this wasted space here and here, it's the diamond that kind of cuts down on the extra space, but at the same time, make sure um, that when you draw that bubble around it, you're not crowding that bubble right up to the edge of the words. When you're writing your words, you want, um, especially if it's, um, if it's a, an impactful word, like somebody gets punched, smack. You don't want it to be tiny and say smack like you're just poking somebody. If you're screaming, you don't want it to be tiny where it's just like, eh, you don't want that. You want, ah! So you gotta really think about like drawing those letters uh, and making them look like they sound. So all this, this next information is a little but extra information, if you don't think about it when you're drawing your speech bubble, don't worry. Um, but this is something that people that are lettering for graphic novels and comic books do. If a person is, um, 
uh, using the pronoun I, then they use the crossbars on the I. So it's not just a line, it's got a line at the top and the bottom of that line. If they're just saying like, uh, it's Jack, you just put, you know, like a, it's not the pronoun I, you just put a straight line. It's only if it's the I, the pronoun, and you're declaring something. Um, again, this has to do with like, don't crowd too much. Don't leave too much space around the edge. Leave enough space around the edge of the words so they can breathe. Again, look at these. This fever won't break. That fits into a, a diamond. Go find some more blankets. That fits into a diamond because the words in the middle are slightly longer than the words at the top and the bottom. When you do the, the tails of the speech bubbles, don't, don't have it so the person looks like they're talking with their hands or their ear. Um, or they're like have it so that it points more toward the mouth. This is like a little bit of extra information here too that if you don't do this it's not the end of the world for this assignment. Uh, and it's a little it might be a little hard to follow but when you're when you're doing these like clumps of words think about words that go together like this is a bad example here where he goes i forgot the warrens or boston's royal family now well words like the warrens the warrens those go together royal family those go together so you just want to try to not split them up when you lay them out and you want to think about what kind of words go together. Let me see if I can find another example. For example, it's Jack Allen. You wouldn't put it's Jack Allen. You would put it's Jack Allen. And then on this, can you hear me? You wouldn't put, can you hear me? You would go, can you hear me? Cause you hear goes together. Does that make sense? You're not here to tell me, but I hope it does. And then finally, um, when you're when you're doing your um, speech bubbles and you're doing the lettering, this is like think about even spacing between the words, like all these spaces between the, the words and the sentences. They're all pretty much about equal, so you're not crowding one word right next to another word. So um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna, I'm gonna stop the share for a second and then I'm gonna put another share up here. Um, let me find this. Oh, maybe I won't be able to, but you're, there's an assignment and it, on, the, on the front page of the assignment, speech bubble assignment, it tells you, um, it like gives you, like instructions again it's a reminder of how we zigzag from left to right and then down left to right and then down left to right and on the back page of that assignment you're gonna have to print it out or if you can't print it out redraw the page with the four panels and what you're gonna do in those four panels is you're gonna draw a page of panels from your story you're going to have speech bubbles in that page of panels and you're going to play like if somebody's speaking first their speech bubble goes higher the other person goes lower you're going to place the tails on those speech bubbles so they're pointing us in the right direction you're going to not crowd your letters you're not you're going to not have too much space around the words in the speech bubble or too little space and you're um, you're gonna also when you do the speech bubbles you're gonna plan it out where you're not impeding important parts of the drawing 
And so if you have any other questions um, before, this is due next week and some of you missed your composition, like you missed turning those in. And there's also the guest artist, artist the guest artist, the guest artist journal four that's due next week. So if you miss class, then you're going to write about what you were doing um, and why you, not why you weren't in class, but what you were doing while the rest of us were in class. That's going to be your journal, but please pay attention to word count on that. And um, I believe that is it. And I'm I am going to stop recording. If only I can figure out how to stop recording this. So, oops. So, let me stop recording.